Have I been talking this entire time with no sound? Oh, crap. Oh, well. You'll just have to assume that I was talking about some really important things there at the beginning. Um, <laughs> I forgot I had muted the um, the mic. <laughs> anyway, all I was talking about was getting stuff done. Um, I was talking about what we had done for the horns, uh, the flesh last episode, and we knocked a bit of that green out of the... Um, um, Out of the axe head. I can see I can see a sound. Seems to be no audio on Twitch. Say what? I'm going to assume you can hear me now. Can I hear me now? Let's see here. Can I hear myself? Can I hear myself? I can hear myself. I'm on Twitch. I can hear it. I can hears me. Okay. So anyway, yeah. So as I was talking about, um, we had done the horns. We had done the axe head. Uh, brighten up the flesh a bit. Uh, we also did the uh, icons on his loincloth. And so today we're going to work on the skulls. We're going to touch up some odds and ends. I'm not sure if I want to touch that horn on his head. I might brighten the horn on his head. Kind of like how what we had done for the spikes but hard to say and then of course we're going to work on the base now the base i'm not going to kill myself over the base um you know i don't think it's necessary but i think today time allotted uh we should be able to get this guy done and get him to um what i would consider a <coughs> excuse me a um a high tabletop <coughs> i don't know if i'd consider this display it might be on that boundary, but... So we're going to work on the skulls. And for that, I am going to... Oh, grab a color that I like to use for skulls, which is... Where is it? Well, I guess we could go in with some Ushapti bone. But I want to start off with something a little bit more substantial than that. Oftentimes for skulls, I often start off with a Rakarth flesh. Um, just because it's a nice, even solid color and it sits on, on the surface well. And if I wanted to go with contrast or you go with shade washes or what have you, um, you know, it'll sit right on top of it. And it just, you know, it still plays within you know the realm of browns and light browns and, you know, so I'm going to grab a little bit of Rick Carth flesh. Slap a little bit onto my palette. Okay. We all good? We're all good. Comfy? Comfy. Yeah. Let's grab a little bit of water into my brush. Just a bit. Just to knock some of this color down a bit. Hmm. Now, as far as the base color is concerned, what colors should I play with for the base? Ah, there's the question. The question of the day. What colors should I use for the base? Yeah, see, Ricard Flesh, like, it already has an already nice bone hue to it, right? why often I pick it. It's why often? Is that good English? Why often? Why I often? Anywho. And as usual, if I go silent, that's because I'm concentrating, using all my brain power to apply this paint. I do think I need to move my camera because I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm resting properly here. Hold on. If I'm like this, yeah, the camera's gotta get moved. So if I'm right there, right? Camera's gotta come 
down a bit. Come over a bit, right? Or maybe I can just move myself over here. I'll just move myself right there. I'll move myself right there, and we should be good. Ricard Flesh is so versatile, Raziel. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a really fantastic color. I like using it. I use it in a lot of stuff. Not just, you know, uh, for namesake of, you know, doing a flesh tone on something. Because it is often the beginning for healthy looking flesh, for necrotic flesh. Use it on bases. It gets used all over the place. So, yeah. Go Starman Deluxe. Hey, Chris and Monkeys. Just got back from a walk. Cool. Gotta stay healthy. So I was just actually talking to my brother. And I was telling him that, uh, yeah. And I've, I think I've mentioned this on previous um, live streams. That I think old Chris is definitely going to pick up uh, yoga. And, yeah. I was just talking with my wife today. That, yeah. I think I have to, I have to get my joints moving because... Man, old Chris is uh, in a bit of pain. Just on any normal given day, is it's just kind of kind of crappy. It just my joints hurt, and my knees, back, <sighs> all sorts of pain. Is it dietary? Possibly. Is it from a lack of moving? <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> so yeah, so I think I'm gonna just. Pull the trigger and just start doing yoga. Not to be confused with Yoda. That's something else entirely. But yeah. I think it's time for old Chris to start actually taking care of himself. <laughs> Maybe. Possibly. Now, I said earlier that I'm not really in the mood to do a contrasty type of method, like contrast paint method, for these skulls. But who knows? I mean, we may just do it in a normal sense. Maybe I'll do it... Maybe I will do it in a normal sense. Oh, the decisions, the decisions. You know what? Okay. Well, while that dries, I'm going to have a sip of coffee. Heretic Scott, howdy, duders. Howdy. Raziel, love your armor color. Yeah, I like it too. I was, and you know what? Like, I, I don't know if I've seen any other Lord of Plagues painted in this similar kind of color scheme with coppers. You know, and browns work very well with Nurgle color schemes. So I don't know why there's not that many people working with coppers and, or even bronzes. Everybody always paints the armor freaking green. Like, come on, there's, you're telling me that there's no imagination out there? There's no nobody out there having any fun with this model? I've seen some with purple skin and blue skin. I thought that was really cool. But yeah. Go Starman Deluxe. Do yoga, you shall. Hmm. Jedi Master Yoga on staying fit during lockdown. Hmm. <laughs> Do yoga, you will. All right, let's grab, where is my sepia? I'm going to use sepia, because sepia is a lot of fun. Uh, what other color do I need? Oh, I'm going to need some Ushab T-Bone, some Screaming Skull, and probably some white. Let's grab white scar. We're going to do these skulls. That's what we're working on at the moment, for anybody just tuning in. So I'm going to grab some good old... Seraphim Sepia. This is a fantastic color. I say a lot about a lot about a lot of colors, but colors are just fantastic. <laughs> it's probably why I like art. <laughs> I like nice, bold, rich colors, and you know, I I can get into you know more monochromatic or more subdued color palettes. But oftentimes, uh, it's, it's just my own sensibilities. Not just on miniatures, but paintings themselves. I like, you know, when there's a lot of color, you know. And, and 
Just bold colors, man. Just bold, man. Just bold. All right, let's grab a bit of sepia. And let's grab. Yeah, we'll stick. We'll stick with this brush here. Make sure I'm in frame. Yeah, the sepia should work nicely here. I don't want to go with Agrax. Um, I might put a little Agrax in the eyes, but for the most part, I'm just looking to tint this um, this skulls with uh, sepia. Basically, with the sepia, it's going to give us more of a sickly, kind of rotted um, bone look. That's that's essentially why I'm sticking with sepia in this instance. It's going to give us that that more like necrepid, you know, like the skull was just there. And see how the sepia looks there? That's the kind of look I'm after. I don't want it to look like desiccated, kind of dried bone. I want it to look kind of like it's relatively new sitting on his belt kind of thing, you know. And it's somebody that's just caught the plague and blah, 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 right? <laughs> Speaking of worldwide pandemics, as we all find ourselves in, um, I saw a really great post the other day, yesterday, uh, you know, regarding our current situation and how, you know, basically the plague, you know, wiped out a large portion of Europe and, you know, and how basically because of it, it heralded it in, in uh, the, the Renaissance. And I was thinking that that's actually a really kind of an interesting way of looking at this time we find ourselves in. That, yeah, what if we find ourselves amidst a new renaissance? Wouldn't that be exciting? Now, mind you, I mean, we probably, we probably won't be able to see this new renaissance, but the, the kindling that is, that the embers of it forming are now you know i just thought it was kind of an interesting thought all right so there it is some sepia on those skulls yeah i like that tone better than going with like say agrax earth shade um even the the the, the contrast paint um skeleton horde it's got a bit more yellowy tinge to it than sepia. It's it's in that same family as sepia, more of a yellowy brown, but not quite as you know pronounced. And I may come in with some Agrax or shade and knock those eye sockets down a bit more. They're dark, but I think I want them a little darker. Oh, excuse me. Um. Raziel, no, well, normally for Nurgle people, heavily weather the metals, specifically for Death Guard, the color is green, so most are copying that. Yeah, but I mean, use your imagination, people. I mean, like, alien metals and alien worlds, alien atmospheres, how would alien metals corrode, you know what I mean? Under different circumstances, would they corrode? You know, like, man, you know, just use your freaking imaginations. Just kind of disappointing at times, you know. It's just the lack of imagination I see at times. Reziel Kayoma over on Discord has a very colorful models. Cool. I was trying to type Koma with the dot in his name and Twitch removed it. <laughs> Reziel, which sepia is that? I think there's only one sepia. It's, it's Seraphim sepia. The shade wash, man. It's been around for ages, years. Damn near 10 years, I think, these these uh, shade washes have been out. No? Something like that? It's been a long time that these paints have been out. Anywho. All right. So let's start thinking while, while we're waiting for, you know, Stuff to dry. I mean, I could hit this with the dryer. And, uh, you know, speed it up a bit. But I'm thinking... What are we going to do the base? See, my first inkling was uh, something along the lines of like a dark gray. With, with of course, little bits of uh, greens and browns. 
I don't know, maybe a blue gray. A blue gray would actually be kind of fun. It actually would um, play really, really well, I think, with the yellow elements of the copper and the um, the green. And the blue, like just the hint of blue. I'm talking like a blue gray, almost like Space Wolf gray. No, see. <laughs> Razia, okay, I didn't catch it. I have a good one from Vallejo too. Sure. There's lots. I mean, it's sepia. sepia. Like, for God's sake, sepia is sepia. Uh, dark muddy brown, wet looking. I don't know. Do you think that's too much brown and wet looking? I don't know. What is this on this base? It looks like all pebbles and shit. I mean, I could use like you know, um, you know, a technical on it and bring it out. I could also hit it with some snow. Ooh, what if I did it in the space wolf gray? You know what? I'm gonna hit it with a space wolf gray. Uh, I'm gonna pick something nice and dark to get started with. Uh, let's go with the fang. Stegodon scale green. I'm feeling goofy. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit goofy. Stegodon scale green is actually a really kind of fun color. And that on the base. Maybe a little too intense. I mean, we'll knock this down with, um, uh, like, using, like, uh, Ushapti Bone and stuff. Like, this, not, it, this won't, it won't finish with this dominance. But, yeah. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Snow would be cool. Yeah, I think snow. I don't usually do a lot of snow. I've got, do I got snow? I've got snow. Yeah, I've got, I've got this stuff. The Valhalla and Blizzard. We can play with that. We'll keep that out. I'm going to go with this Stegodon Scale Green. I'm going to just do the base with that. And in fact, I could probably use something like um, Agrax Earthshade. Just to get deepen up the color. Knock a bit of that bright kind of green out. And then um, highlight in some um, Ushapti Bone into this. And bring it up a bit. But, you know neutralize some of that um that blue quality that's what we're gonna do yeah oh i could even went with inky by darkness too yeah i think that's a fun color that's fun fun is fun so basically what i'm looking for is um you know Just a hint of a complimentary to all the yellows, but not so on the nose, as it were, right? And I'll just catch this rim for the moment. It's, I'm not really doing the rim at the moment, but it's just so I can visualize this a little bit more. Yeah, see how it looks really intense right now, but don't worry, we'll, we'll correct that later. This is just the beginning. This is just, just the under bit. I might even leave the rim this color. The rim this color is kind of fun. Now nah, we'll do it black. <laughs> I was liking it, but then I was like, nah, nah. I'm often that way with a lot of my painting. I'll just, do I like it? Oh, I like it. I'm really intense about it for a second or two. And then it's like, um, yeah, okay, I'm over it. <laughs> I'm trying very hard not to hit any other areas here. So I like this brush for that instance where you can, because it's got the longer bristles, you can push color a little further into some spaces rather than trying to, you know, just jam it all home right away. It also gives you the opportunity to come at it from the other side as well. Could have thinned it down a bit more too, just to help it flow within recesses and such. 
Those are all possibilities. Could have done. Could have, would have, could have, should have. Painting is not about absolutes in that regard. But there are many ways to an end result. So when you see something out there, don't get caught up in, well, that's the way it's done. Eh, not really. For the most part. For the most part, there's other ways to do it. There's always alternatives. And not thinking of alternatives is only displaying a lack of imagination. And you know me. I don't like a lack of imagination. I don't like when, you know, people can't see past their own frickin' noses. Uber Tellucci, how are you today? I'm not too bad, buddy. Not too bad. Just painting on some miniature. Put painting on some miniature. Putting paint on miniatures is what I'm doing at the moment. Grab a little bit more of this stick dawn scale green. Man, I'm even thinking I might throw right um, Ricard flesh into it as the highlight color. I'm just kind of liking. Just that, that play of tone there. Anyway. Oh, subscribe with Twitch Prime. Thank you, sir. Or ma'am. I don't know. <laughs> I'll assume, sir. You know what? We are going to thin this down just a bit. Because I'm okay with applying multiple layers into the base just to get this solid coverage. This does not have to be, you know, perfectly smooth. But I do want it to butt right up against details. So make sure here. In the frameish. Yep, yeah, there we go. It's flowing nicely. The paint must flow. Who else is excited for the new Dune movie? Is anybody out there as excited as I am? I am so looking forward to that, man. That is going to be good. I know it is. I'm saying it right now. It's going to be awesome. Well, it's part one, so part one will be awesome. Who knows about part two? Because part one of The Matrix was awesome. And then they freaking stank it all up. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I mean, the second part of Matrix had some really great scenes, but come on. Did it need to be made? No. And then, of course, there's like a new version of it. Good God. Good God. But yeah, I'm looking forward to Dune, man. I am looking forward to it. Uh, Uber Tellucci. I didn't know there was going to be a new Dune. Not Doom. Dune. D-U-N-E. From um, Frank Herbert. The novel Dune. There was a David Lynch film back in the 80s. Uh, there was also another version that was going to get made back in the late 70s. Of course, that one fell through. But yeah, and this is the latest. Well, then there was one um, adaptation created for the Sci-Fi Channel, which was uh, really good. Uh, I kind of wish it had more budget for its effects because that show would have really just... It would have been the whole package at that point. And, you know, but yeah... And of course, any self-respecting 40K fan has to be familiar with Dune, for God's sakes. So much of 40K borrows from Dune. My daughter's birthday today. So, yeah, you know what? I am, for the most part, I mean, I don't think I'm going to keep that rim this color, but I am mostly okay with that. Because once we throw on uh, some highlights and such, 
and then uh, we get into because um, the rim I think the rim I will do black and of course when we throw some snow on there I think that'll help as well but that's fun I'm okay with that uh Reziel, I'm hopeful for the dune movie yeah for the dune movie yeah I'm, ex I'm excited I'm looking forward to it. Um, I mean, the director who's doing it is um, a director who has displayed, uh, you know, a passion for the, the properties that he's, uh, you know, done films for. He's got a real great artistic sense. And, yeah. He's really good. And so that's why I'm excited. Now, we applied that sepia to the bone, and I am, like I said, mostly good with that. So I think I'm going to come in with a bit of Ricard flesh, and I'm going to break it down to a glaze, and I think I'm going to glaze some highlights into those areas. And I think what I will use is contrast for those little ropes, and I think I might do that now. Um, where is snake bite leather? Of course it's snake white leather. Anybody who was thinking that I wasn't going to use snake white leather today is crazy. If I can find it, of course. Where the frick is it? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> uh, Uber Tolucci. Oh, Dune, I am excited, but the old movie is so good. The book has been on my list to read for you. Oh, read the book, dude. Yeah, read the book. Read the, the movie, that, that the David Lynch movie. It's... Read the, read the book. Even just read the very first book. Now, apparently this movie that is coming out, uh, the remake. It's not a remake. It's a uh, reimagining. Because it's not, it's not a reboot. It's a reimagining of the source material. So it's not a sequel. It's not anything... Uh, it's 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 its own standalone piece, and um, I'm excited. And it looks good. And it's a two-parter, so it's already being made as a two-parter. <sighs> Congrats, <laughs> Uber Tucci! Congratulations to her. Go Star and Deluxe! Happy birthday to her! Yeah, I already wished her a happy birthday this morning and everything. She took off with her mother. I, I can hear them fussing about upstairs, so they're back home. Yes, they went out. <laughs> Supposed to be staying home, but they went out. Um, Uber Tolucci, I have two shelves of shame. One for books and one for unpainted minis. Well, honestly, um, now is the time. I mean, like if you said, oh, well, I, uh, you know, if I only had the time to get my model done or get reading done or anything like that, and you're not getting it done right now, then it wasn't time that was the problem right so right now you got the time to get that stuff done what else are you doing? unless of course you're working still then if you're working well then ignore what i just said <laughs> uh i i, I apologize <laughs> so really quickly here i'm just laying this contrast on those little ropes that are going around the skulls I can't quite get under the skull there. I don't even know if it comes back around. It looks like it does. Ah, oh, screw it. We'll try and knock that out. Sort of. Kind of. Not good enough. Got in behind that skull. You can see that little, little strap goes in behind the skull like that. So we, we caught that. And we got the little strap. See on the skull? See, this is why I love the contrast colors. Because just for some tiny stuff like this... It's just, it works so darn well for just banging out these little details. And, you know, like, oftentimes I usually don't fret over these kind of things. And sometimes maybe I'll, I'll even usually forget about them. And especially if I'm just doing it for tabletop models, yeah, I'll end up forgetting about the detail. And, you know, and I usually don't sweat it. But because I'm painting this for camera and, you know, I'm showing you guys this stuff, you know, it, it makes me a bit more observant. Is this some, some sort of patch he's on? I guess so. So let's paint it. 
We're painting it. We're doing it. We're doing it live. So, yeah. I'm just going to push a bit more color there. see there I assume that's what that detail is it's like a little patch that's keeping the skull on his belt kind of thing it's like a little clasp it's like a skull pouch <laughs> is that a thing a skull pouch I don't know it is now but it's a skull pouch I'm just gonna deepen it up a bit more just hitting with some more contrast just because it's such a large flat area large it's a tiny it's like only a couple millimeters but it's you know it's large it's just huge there we go yeah see that's that's why i like contrast see we colored that area it's got an edging around it it's got a little bit of high points got some shadowy points like for god's six people <laughs> Okay, we'll give that a few moments here. Uh, Johnny Chop Shop, subscribe to Twitch Prime. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Cheers. No, there's no cheer in this, but. <laughs> uh, Reziel, the Lynch movie is great for the most part, but deviates from the book pretty significantly. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, the movie, like if you're a fan of the movie and you've only ever experienced Dune in that regards, this new movie, I'm willing to bet you're still going to love it. I'm willing to bet. Uh, people who are who love the book and who were disappointed by the 84 movie, I'm willing to suspect they're going to love this new movie. So, I honestly see like very little downside to this new movie coming out. As far as being, you know, an adaptation of Dune. Um, Uber Tolucci, not working. I am a physiotherapist and a karate teacher. So just hobby for now. Working on some projects for my thousand sons. Have you posted pictures of your thousand sons? Uh, I recall seeing thousand sons. Was that you that sent pictures in? If so, send more pictures. Send more pictures. I love getting emails from you guys showing off your work and, you know. Uh, it's great. It's uh, it fills me with just the teeniest bit of uh, oh of a burp of joy, you know, that you guys are getting to some painting and you know, yeah. Rezio, oh yeah, salutations on this the anniversary of the day of your daughter's birth. <laughs> yeah, thank you, dude. Kyle McLaughlin and Sting were awesome back then. Yeah. I mean, you know, why Sting won that role, I have no idea. Um, and they also did a press release of, like, what, um, you know, like, uh, House of Trades and everything like that. Oh, man, like, the armor, the armor looks so darn cool. I'm excited. Like I said, I'm excited for this movie. I'm excited. It's not often I get excited about, you know, upcoming movies. I'm usually not one of those folk that, you know, jumps on hype trains too often, but, yeah. This one, I might get on the hype train for. Uber Delucci, don't remember, but I will send some. What's the email? It's chris at wayofthebrush.com. Just go to wayofthebrush.com, and you'll see a link for my email there. Um, but yeah, it's chris, K-R-I-S. Right? <laughs> don't remember how to spell my name. Raziel, the slow blade per penetrates the shield. <laughs> Alrighty, we're going to go back to some Ricard's Flesh. Slap a little bit onto my palette. Um, I'm going to thin this down with just a bit of medium. And we're going to create a little glaze out of this. We're just going to throw on some... We're just going to basically uh, begin our highlighting process. Wait. Grab a little bit of some Lamian medium. Lamian. Lamian. One of the two. Depends on how you say words. All depends. <laughs> depends. 
So we're just making a little glaze out of this. It's probably a little too heavy, but that's okay. No, that's okay. That's fine. Yeah, you can see it's quite a bit on my brush, but that's okay. I'm just going to basically start just doing some very quick little highlights here. I'll probably establish some high points like here. Yeah. Just follow the the bone. The bone. Get the teeth. The teeth. Oh, I want for Christmas is my teeth. My teeth. Teeth. So basically what I do is once that little first little layer is dry, I come back in with the color and just rebuild it up again so you can kind of see the skull. This pushes that sepia back just a bit. And I think we'll take some Ushap T-Bone and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll bring up a little bit more highlights in there. Just catching some of these teeth I'm trying to stay in frame here but just the angle of things it just you know you guys are not really going to get to see a whole lot of this process so you'll have to forgive me but you know i'm sure many of you will get over it So, yeah, and we'll do one more little layer on that little skull just to bring some more of that brightness out. <clears throat> Thin it down just a bit of water. Oh, too much water. It's okay. It's all right. So, usually, what I do is if there's too much on my brush, just kind of like that. Then, real quickly, I just daub it off on my paint and rag. And you see most of it's gone right out of the bristles. Disappeared. Where it went? Don't know. Don't care. And we're just going to quickly glaze this up. Just a final little glaze. Just to just marry some of these transitions together going on in the skull. Like so. Yeah. A little bit more. I'm going to grab some of the pure color here. <clears throat> Put that right on that brow on that eye socket yeah just like that yeah there we go and let's come back in here put a nice sharp highlight right there close to the string just like that yeah starting to look like little skulls on his belt now eh no? Yeah? Now ah, what do you know? <laughs> All right, let's, let's grab a little dollop of uh, Ushabti Bone. Now, I'm using Ushabti Bone, even though Ushabti Bone is not that much brighter than Ricard Flesh versus, say, Screaming Skull, which is noticeably brighter, right? You know what? Screw it. Let's use... Yeah, let's use Screaming Skull. Let's mix a little Screaming Skull into it. Because I only want to do one more highlight. Uh, -bum -bum. <laughs> Rezio. Making me think of Samurai Jack episode with the Scotsman. He's like, the castle of Boone. Of Boone. Alright. I actually never watched Samurai Jack, so I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> I have no clue what the hell that means. What that reference means. <clears throat> So one little dollop into the Ricard flesh, just to, yeah, that's the stuff right there. Yeah, I'm happy with that color. It's got the, it's got lighter tone to it, but it's not, it's not the 
the same. It's what I'm looking for. So all I'm going to do is just catch some of the brow, the teeth. I actually might come in with the teeth and do a little bit of white if I'm feeling silly. So let's go. Let's just catch the brow here. Like so, the cheek, a bit of the nose, the crest of the nose, the underside, and you know, yeah, we will catch the teeth. Just like that. A little bit of the brow. Right down. Maybe just a little bit on the top of the skull. Up close to the, the uh, rope. You know, yeah. So, oops, shit, almost touched the, touched the wrong part. Yeah. Just something like that. And I mostly have okay with all that. But again, you know, the uh, when you're doing colors, right? Don't get caught up in the, in the in the name, the brand, whatever. Just think of the pure tone. And what you want to accomplish and of course the color in which you're choosing you know obviously you're going for a particular vibe right and you know just don't get caught up in all these little trivialities what paint what brush these things ultimately don't really matter realistically as far as you getting miniatures done even any anything really for that matter it doesn't really matter because what is going to get your miniatures done is you you're going to get them done Again, I am most okay. You know what? I'm not going to bother hitting those teeth. I was going to hit the teeth with more white, but I am okay with that. And I think with that, I don't know. Skulls are done. Skulls look fine to me, right? So. The horn. We talked about the horn. The horn. The horn on his head. What do we do about the horn on his head? <laughs> Rezio, you haven't watched Samurai Jack? WTF, you got to fix that problem ASAP. You know what? I don't watch a lot of TV, though. And, I mean, if I recall right, Samurai Jack, like, it was a cartoon on the car tur Cartoon Network. And it, when it came out, like, man, I was an adult starting a family. I mean, you know, my son, I don't even, I don't even know if my son watched it. There was lots of stuff I was watching with my son. I mean, like, there's lots of things that, you know, last 20 years, like Digimon, Pokemon, you know. Um, i trying to think of all the shit. Like, you know, he was watching Kim Possible and all the different shows. I I would watch them with him, but I, hell if I knew what was going on. But, you know. <laughs> Power Rangers, he loved Power Rangers. Voltron. I kind of got him into the Voltron. Um same with like Star Wars, you know, stuff like that. Like, you know, he can blame me because I got him into those because I love those things, right? So, G.I. Joe, shit like that. Uh, Rezio, well, I don't watch much uh, either, but some stuff is totally worth it. Samurai Jack is more art form than cartoon. Oh, the other one was uh, um, uh, the guy, the blonde Elvis. Johnny Bravo. <laughs> that was the other one. I, I used to get a kick out of that. Oh, and there was another one, too. I used to watch was uh, with the Barbarian. Barbarian dude. Terrible. Can't think of the name. Anyway. Yeah, those ones. But, yeah, there's, there's, a, lot of, there's a lot of stuff I've, I've missed that I'm not a part of. But, I mean, like, I was busy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... Uh, reading, painting, and working. 
you know? And like when my kids were small, uh, I worked a lot of nights. And so I would only ever see my kids when they went off to school, when they came back, right? And, you know, I'd be gone for dinner time, you know? So I only, I only saw them for a little bit. So obviously, you know, I had to sp spend my time with them when I, when I could, right? A lot of times on my days off, I'd go and do something. Wouldn't sit around the house. Well, we'd sit around the house sometimes, but, you know, usually it was, you know, trying to get things to happen, right? And, you know, go do something. Go here. Go visit family. Go, you know, doing, you know what I mean? Doing stuff. Not just sitting around the house. Um, not that I'm opposed to sitting around the house, because sometimes you need to just chill out, relax, and, you know. But, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so for the most part, I mean, like, we can start working on the base and be done with this guy, right? I mean, there's a few things that I do want to change. I want to reinforce some of those belly sores that are going on. Um, I do want to kind of brighten up some of those guts that are dripping over the handle. Because I want to create a bit of separation there. The, the, the values are kind of similar. Um, yeah. In the meantime, though, let's hit the let's hit the base with something. So we use Stegadon Scale Green. Um, we could use a color like Agrax Earthshade. I only have the gloss variety. I thought I had my a regular matte variety Agrax Earthshade, but apparently I don't. I must have ran out at some point. Could use Null Oil. Non oil would accomplish it as well. Or we could have more fun. We could have more fun. Oh. What if we took... What is it? What, what did I use? Um, I probably could use snake bite leather. No, nah, snake bite leather won't, probably won't do it. Hmm. Okay, so scale, uh, stick it on scale green. It's got a lot of blue quality to it, right? It's like this turquoise quality. It's a blue green. <clears throat> now, just knowing a basic. No, I don't got any army painter washes. Um, or do I? I've got regular army paint. Oh, wait, maybe I do. Oh, what do I got here? Oh, I've got strong tone. I guess I could use some strong tone, right? Okay, let's... Okay, you convinced me, Rezo. Let's use some strong tone. You can see the bottle's kind of dusty. It's been a while since I've used it. <laughs> um, yeah, you convinced me. Let's use some strong tone. Because uh, this this should be just like Agrax or shit, right? I was thinking initially... Um, so I, as I was going to go back to my original, what I was talking about here. So it's a blue-green. Now, if we wanted to neutralize this and bring it back towards more of, um, you know, uh, closer to brown, really, realistically, but really, uh, but really, we want to neutralize it, desaturate. What color would you use? Just off the top of your head, what color would you use? A blue green. Knowing your color wheel, what would you use? Because the fun one I was thinking of is something like. Um, like Wild Rider Red. Using Wild Rider Red thinned down into a wash so it falls into the recesses and then um, it should neutralize the color. You should still see green-blue points at areas and you should still see orange-red points at areas, right? Red Gore? Uh, red Gore, uh, it's, it's Red Gore. What's Red Gore? Is that a Citadel color or is that another color? Basically, I'm talking about an orange-red orange, orange red. Right, because if it's a blue green, but it, it shifts very heavily to blue, so really you want to have more orange, right? So, yeah. But an orange on top of this would neutralize a lot of that color. Now, mind you, though, if you had that blue green sitting next to each other and you had that red orange sitting next to each other, to the eye, the eye neutralizes those colors. Uh, they don't actually have to. They don't actually have to like you know sit on top of each other to neutralize each other. They can sit just beside each other, and your eye will 
will knock that color saturation out. Yeah. Precursor to Citadel color to corn red. Oh, yeah. No, corn red, no. You, with this kind of, like, with a blue-green, right? Think of your color wheel. Blue, what's the, what's the opposite of the blue? Orange. Green, opposite. Red. So you're looking for a red-orange to neutralize it. Anyway. And from that, I mean, like, you know, that's, you know, very, very minimal color theory, you know. Anyway, we're going to use strong tone. I'm just going to go with just darkening it and knocking a bit of brown into it, right? Because this strong tone should have a brown quality to it. Uh, but yeah, I need, uh, but yeah, I get the need for the orange tint as well. Yeah, well, because it, it's, because it's very blue. And if you want to neutralize that very blue quality of it, you got to use red orange. So that's why I was recommending it. But that's why the brown should be fine because the brown has orange qualities to it, right? It has very warm qualities. So again, in theory, uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, this is, this is, this is just like egg rex or shade. So I'm going to use the shade brush at my own peril. Do you know if this creeps into recesses or does this sit right on the surface like a normal ink? It's been a very long time since I've used this product. Hence the dust. <laughs> let's see. Let's have a look. Uh, I'll hit this. Oh, that seems to be flowing into the recesses just fine. Okay. Well, I was just, I was asking because I was probably going to hit it with uh, flow aid if that were the case so that it fell into the recesses. But it doesn't seem necessary to do, so we will leave it as such. So we're just going to apply it around. You can see the darkening quality of it, but because it has that slight brown cast to it, yeah, it's going to it's going to play with those colors. You can almost see there's a yellowing. See how it's almost looking like more green is starting to show up now? That's that brown. Uh, that's the orange quality playing with that blue. And so now you're starting to see more green cast come in because the, because the orange property is neutralizing the blue. So that's why your eye starts to pick that up. I can hear my daughter using excuses. It's my birthday. Do this. No, it's my birthday. I get to do this because it's my birthday. Oh, shit. <laughs> when applying washes, you got to be careful not to overwork your brush back and forth over an area because you obviously will introduce um, air bubbles. It's like, you know, it'll, it'll begin to foam up kind of thing, right? And you don't want that. You don't want it. You don't want it. Can we get everywhere? I think so. Okay, we'll let that dry for a bit. Actually, I'm okay with all that. Again, like I said, it's not going to stay this pure, pure value like that. I am kind of still tempted just to actually hit it with a wash of an orange paint. Just for gigglays. What else are we working on? Oh, I was going to reestablish some color. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm going to grab... I'm going to grab Volpolis Pink. Where is that? Where's the Volpolis Pink? God damn it. Arg. <laughs> That's Madras Purple. Where the hell is the... God dang... There it is. And I'm going to grab Leviathan Purple. 
I'm going to use just a bit of these two to um, to reestablish some of those sores. And I'm actually thinking with the Leviathan purple, I'm thinking of actually do, drawing in little veins. So that's what I'm going to go for right now. Just from some of the wounds, I'm just going to do just a couple little, you know, little Y's, right? Little tree branches, as it were. I think that's what we're going to do. Vulpus pink, I'm going to use just around the um, the sore itself, just to kind of re-redden uh, the uh, flesh. Just in those areas, make them look a little bit more irritated. And then with the purple, I think what I'm going to do is probably just create a little bit of shadow, but then I'm also going to do like some little uh, veins. Uh, Reziel, you got Cassandora? Uh, Cassandora Yellow? Yes, I do. Yeah, the Shade Wash, Cassandora Yellow? Yes, I do. Um, would that work in this instance? I don't know, because it's a transparency, right? And I, I want more of an opaque color in that area. Whereas the transparency more of the undercolor will show through versus using an opaque where they'll sit beside each other or it'll sit right on top. But because it's a bit thinner, you know, less of that undercolor will show through, right? Well, versus a transparency where, you know, all that color will show through and you're relying on basically the oversaturation of it to sit in recesses. Uh, -bum -bum. You want to glaze then? Glaze what? Glaze the base? I'm not following. <laughs> I'm not following you, Reziel. You're 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 messing with me now. Sorry, I'm just giving these things a good mix. With these contrast paints, you always have to make sure that they are thoroughly mixed. Always. Well, that goes with any paint, really. And I'm still looking for a good paint shaker. I think I'm just gonna pick up a jigsaw and I'm gonna weld a, uh, um, an attachment to the uh, like a C clamp. You know, those are little adjustable uh, C clamps. And I think, uh, basically, I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to... I like that method, and it seems a little aggressive, but that's okay. Because I've seen the ones that just kind of sit on your table, and they just... And I, I don't know. Like, the, like when I shake a paint, this is how I shake it, right? Like, I hold it like I would, like a C-clamp, and I just, you know, back and forth, I shake it, right? And to me, like, a jigs like you know, those jigsaws, and just attach a C-clamp, and just... Right? That's just, you know, I don't know. Seems more efficient to me. Okay, so let's go with some Volpus pink. All right, I'm going to do some Volupus, Volpus, Volpus, <laughs> Hansel, Hansel. Um, I'm kind of tempted to thin it down. But I'll try it right out of the bottle. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch around the little sores, right? I'm just going to hit some areas and just reestablish some of that that um, that meatiness in some of these areas. So I'm just grabbing just a tiny amount. Well, that's not really a tiny amount, but yeah. So let's see here. Let's get in. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I think if I was thinning it down, I don't think I'd be saturated enough. Versus this, right? So I'm getting just a bit of that lighter tone in there now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I am going to thin it down, though. So with thin it down, I'm just going to put a little bit on my palette, grab just a generous amount of water, just that much water, and just thin it down. I don't know if you guys can... No, you guys can't see my palette. <clears throat> when it's thinned out enough, you can see it's pretty rich in this... In this uh, hairs and I'm just gonna go in and just start touching areas just to introduce a little bit of color just like so and I'm gonna 
I hit some of these little kind of little pock marks. If all we're doing is just bringing a bit of life back into some of these areas. You know what? I'll hit some of these boils as well. Yeah. some of these boils I like when the boils have just a little bit of redding reddening on them just gives it more of that kind of pustule kind of feeling oh shit there we go just catching the underside here it's like this little ledge inside your belly I'm just getting color in there Probably could hit it with a bit more saturation, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, ba -dum -ba -bum -ba -bum. Go stem man deluxe, you gotta shake that paint manually to keep the strength in your arms. <laughs> well, that's why I think I gotta do some yoga, man. Keep that strength in my arms. Yeah, I'm definitely liking the, the Volpo's pink in there. Um, just reestablishing some of those sores, bringing a bit more color and life back in, keeps the red, uh, you know, at play, and it doesn't feel so stark, right? Like once I bring it onto this back, you'll see what I mean. Once I bring some of this color back. So I'm not applying it too heavily. Just going around. Oh, that's a little heavily. As I said, I'm trying not to apply it too heavily. I'm just letting it run the perimeter of the little wounds, as it were. I don't want to have it too heavy. But yeah. Yeah. catching some of the little warts and such or pustules whatever the hell they are yeah see what I mean how it brings that back it also ties that red a bit more I also got to do the legs as well oh Rezzy I gotta go already dude later dude Lators Lators So, we're going to do the little sores on his leg. I'm just going to, you know what, for these, I will fill these in. Just because I hadn't initially laid any color in those areas. Again, I'm not too worried about some of these areas. I'm not feeling too precious about them. Well, some of them, I don't even know if you'll see properly. Yeah, but really quickly it makes the it makes it feel more tied in. Like you know, if you recall when we started this little venture, um, you know, the back sores and everything like that were had much more color going on. We knocked that out, and so now we're coming back and reestablishing some of those tones. Just for giggles, I'm using this actually as a bit of a liner for some of these areas. Just to kind of create like the idea that maybe he's irritated around where his metal is touching his limbs. <laughs> Something fun like that, you know. Oh, I gotta do the belly belly. His belly belly. His jiggly belly. These little Pustules underneath as well. There we go. Yeah. Getting a little bit more magenta going on in here. And 
fact, I probably could hit that with a bit more. Now, see, with that, with that now, you can see how the guts look more gut-like, more intestine color, right? They don't feel like a little while ago, right, when I was talking about how those guts, I might have to do redo those guts. I'm okay with how they look now. Just because that uh, the magenta tones, um, you know, help create that separation in those areas now. And the base is not quite dry yet. You can see there's still some wet points where it was pretty heavy. Again, I am still tempted to kind of hit that with an orange. Just knock more of that, or the red orange. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, once I throw, start throwing snow around on this, it's probably going to disappear anyway. Oh, excuse me. What was the next plan? Oh, right, the purple. <laughs> purple. Purple, purple, purple. Purple. How long are we going? Hour 10. Holy caramelies. An hour 10. Boom, 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 boom. Boom 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 So I'm gonna use shyish purple. I think what I'll do with the shyish purple is on the high points within the little wounds. I'll do just a little bit of the purple, just a little bit. But then I'm going to try and do just some quick little veins from some of the big sores. Probably mostly on the belly and probably on the shoulders. Not too much. Because you don't want to overdo it, right? You don't want to have just veins all over it because then the whole surface will feel very messy. And I don't want that. I just want the little hint of, of things. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So, I'll grab my trusty rusty brush it's actually not rusty but yeah so i'm thinking like um like a little vein running across here like probably like maybe a couple vein kind of things coming over here kind of thing and that probably it i'm gonna hit some of this upper portion here in purple probably that one probably that one probably that one maybe that one in some purples so let's grab a little bit and let's start playing. <clears throat> now this is just to create a deeper tone. I don't want it to feel too heavy with the pigment. Yeah. Just like that. Just that. It's almost like black lining. But I'm not using black. I'm using purple. Tiniest amounts, just like that. Just about, yeah, it's just to create the impression of a little bit more shadow. So you can see it's a little darker in there, just in those upper points, right? Let's go to the back side here. We'll do it on these little back sores right here. So we'll just introduce a little bit of purple here, just a little bit. It also creates a bit more depth in those areas, right? I guess we can do it on this leg one too. Just like that. Just creates a bit of a shadow. Um, I am good with most of that. So now, Let's do a couple veins. So for the veins, we're just going to require a very steady hand, just a couple of hairs of our brush, and just very gently we are going to draw in just basically like little tree branch type shapes. Just imagine you're drawing a tiny little tree branch. So let's say, um, try and stay in frame here. Yeah, let's say like on this shore here,
something like that so it's just very very minimal I actually now want to come back in with some um, some of the flesh tone and kind of marry that in just so it's not so saturated that might still happen yeah because it is pretty heavy you know what I'm gonna let's let's thin it down just a bit just so we can get some more of the um, color showing through the base color maybe we'll save ourselves having to reglaze some areas because quite honestly I don't remember what colors are used to highlight the skin with <laughs> so we're just gonna do yeah we're just gonna do something like this just create tiny little lines it's a little too light but I'm okay with that It's almost like drawing in the hints of lines or the hints of veins. They're there, but you know, they're not too distinct. Hmm, kind of interesting. Yeah, like on the belly there. See, I just drew this very hint of a line. You know, I'm gonna go with a couple of more points. Because maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll build it up from the shadows more like a necrotic flesh type of thing here so let's go like this Just gives the skin just a bit more of a sickly like appearance. That's kind of fun. I'm having fun. Are you having fun? Let's do one from up from this elbow joint. Something like that. See, it's a very, very light hint of those veins. <clears throat> you could do this all day. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. I'm definitely digging it. If we grab some more pure color, thin it down ever so slightly. I probably should use contrast medium for this, actually. Reestablish some more of these belly veins from the shadows. Just like that. Probably don't even see those very well, do you? Hard part when doing something like this is knowing when to stop. Sometimes it's hard to know. <laughs> but yeah, that's fun. And fun is fun. You know, let's do one from his hip. Just some minimal surface stuff, just to break those lines up, create some more depth. All right, enough farting around with that. Uh, where are we on this drawing of this base? 
It's looking mostly dry. Now, let's take our color, stick it on scale green, and we will add Ushab de Boom. Yes. We'll do this one uh, roughly a, well, let's say, three to one, three scaled, stick it on to one Ushab i got to make sure my Ushab is shooken up. Yeah, let's do that. So let's grab three little dollops of Stegadon. One, two, and three. Okay. I just realized I mean, my painting jar you can see over here on the frame uh, it's it was a jar of pickled eggs the French for it is oof marines <laughs> pickled eggs is oof marines that's hilarious so we're going to take a little bit of Ushab de Bone and mix that in it's a 3 to 1 ratio and yeah this is a nice color so really what happens is like the yellowing quality of the Ushabti plays with that um, blue-green of the Stegodon. It gives you this, almost starts to desaturate it. But it, it doesn't quite look like, um, like Dark Reaper, but it's somewhere in that kind of ballpark. And uh, you know what? I'm going to use this same brush because we're just going to quickly overbrush these high points on these areas of the brush of the model. We're going to be pretty deliberate. I think with the final highlight, I'll probably apply it by uh, by um, dry brush. But yeah, so I'm just going to quickly just catch high points and just apply this pretty. There's quite a bit of paint on my brush. Applying it bit of an overbrush fashion where the brush is kind of saturated but I'm just catching just the high points so I'm just trying to keep a fairly light hand as I do this so that it's just catching high points yeah see that color yeah that's fun so Guys can see this. So we're just doing like that. So it's just a couple strokes. Try and maintain a somewhat consistent angle to your attack. And you should be able to catch just those high points. Keep a light hand. Don't overwork the paint in too many directions because then you will end up just filling in areas. That's all you're looking to do. Oh, people are yelling at each other upstairs. Quarantine life. The quarantine life starting to get at everybody. Yeah, that's fun. I'm okay with that. Yeah, definitely the rim is going to go black though. Uh, ba -dum -ba -bum. We're going to take a little bit more of Shopti Bone. Going for a bit more of a... What was it? Two to one? So this is more kind of like... Or, no, this was a three to one. So this is, should be a more... Um, oh, my, my fractions are way off here, but it's more like a three to two. Mix that in. Yeah, and a lot more of the color starts to really kind of disappear. It's kind of close to a color like Thunderhawk Blue, if you're on the Citadel side of things, but yeah. 
wiping a lot of the paint off the bristles, just like so. And then in somewhat controlled fashion, I'm gonna just try and catch some of these high points. Just like so. I'm trying to be very deliberate. I'm not trying to hit every area. I'm trying to, you know, apply it in a visually interesting way. So I'm kind of just going for some key areas. Um, you'll see, it'll be more apparent in a moment. Bringing the color really towards the corners. Try to stay somewhat clear, you know, towards some points. Some areas I'm not too worried about too much color gathering because I know they're probably going to get covered up in uh, the snow anyway. So, yeah. I think we'll do one more highlight with this color. Just gonna catch some of these little far flung things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So rinse off. Green leaf terrain. This guy, three bellows to the wind last night, can't hang out with the leaf. Now look, all oh, sunshine and lollipops all over there. Man, I had Rotten Ronnie's last night. Holy shit. I had a uh, double quarter pounder and what was the other one? I had two burgers. I usually don't have two burgers. I had large fries and I shared McNuggets, a 20 pack with Nuggies. Holy shit. I felt like, I felt like shit. Holy moly. So now we're going, it's basically, I'm adding a bit more uh, Ushabti bone to the mixture. It's a bit more of a one-to-one -one now. And yeah. Yeah. More of the Ushabti bone is starting to show through. It's taking on more of a greener quality. Not quite. You can see more of the green showing through. Oh, let me wash my brush. And again, dry this off really good. Grab some color and I'm going to draw it through the palette. I'm going to make a bit of a wedge with the bristles. Kind of like so. You can see it's got a bit of a wedge shape to it now. Wipe off the excess, just like that. And now we are going to just try and catch just the tops of stuff. You guys can't really see that that very well, but hit a little too much there. Yeah, it's probably better if I dry brush this color. That's okay though. We're just gonna push it just towards the corners. Catch those high points. Again, a lot of this will probably get lost once we start applying snow to this anyway. So we shouldn't get too worried about accuracy. Yeah. But I am gonna take some pure Shopti bone and I'm gonna give this a light dry brush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> so, let's find my small dry brush. Oh, there it is. This little beater. I'm probably due for a new one, actually, but. And let's grab a little bit of ooh shab tea bang. Go Starman Deluxe, living the dream. I don't know what that means. What do you mean? Grab just a little bit, 
probably could use uh what is it the dry compound tyrant stone i'm pretty sure this is the same value as this but i'll just use the shanty bone because i got it in front of me and i don't feel like going to go grab my dries all right so small dry brush grab some loose shanty bone wipe it off Okay, and I'll start catching some of these points here. Concentrating more of the color towards the corners just because I want those a little bit brighter. Try not to hit the feet either. Just like that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Excess away and start at the corner here and bring it in. Catch some of these little rock details. Go for this little corner here. inside rocks there it's gonna be a bit of a pain but we'll get it we'll make it happen but yeah i am mostly okay with that i think i still want to knock some of that blue green out so oh catch this little I am mostly okay with that. And yeah, I think I am going to hit that with um, shade wash. <clears throat> now I'm probably done with dry brushing. Now this is something I usually do anyway. Um, is basically I will wash my brush. Uh, my dry brush and I usually do this especially between colors um, because I often don't like cross contamination with colors and dry brushing tends to beat the pigment right into the bristles and so yeah so I usually just give my dry brushing brushes a quick bra uh, cleaning between colors because dry brushing is very rough on your bristles brutal on your bristles it does shorten the life but I often don't worry about conditioning them I mean I could but usually I'm not but there nice and clean ready to go again um yeah, so let's let's thin. Do we want more of the orange? I think Wild Rider Red actually would be the perfect color to use. Or do you feel it's too saturated? Maybe something more like Jacaro Orange? Or maybe even like Squig Orange? Maybe Squig Orange actually may be better. Because it's not quite as saturated. The uh, Wild Rider Red is very saturated. So, yeah. Greenleaf Train, painting Boba Fett. Got excited to paint since I don't uh, much last night, and I binged the whole Waco series on flicks and almost finished them. Just some OSL work now. Cool. <coughs> Johnny Shop Shop, color choices determined by how lazy we feel? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty <coughs> much. So we're gonna take squig orange and we're gonna make a shade wash out of it. Now I just did a bunch of that highlighting onto the base 
and that's where this color is going to go and we're just going to knock some of that really strong tone out but i am i am liking the separation though for the model like he feels very distinct on there so i do like that and i'm going to thin this down quite a bit it's just going to just knock some of that color out i could have done this initially when i was laying it on the model i could have added this to the uh to the uh what did i use stick it on scale green gotta make sure this is thoroughly mixed i don't think i've used this color in a while oh let's see here oh it's fine so let's grab a little amount yeah we don't need that much just that much right there put it onto the palette grab some lamy and medium about uh, four drops ought to do and then a couple drops of liquitex fluid Now I'm going with this color instead of going with a um, like a contrast color because I want the opacity there. But I want this really, really thin. And that's not thin enough. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water. So I'm gonna grab a very generous amount of my wash water here and add it in. flows a little better now all right there's some sort of dingleberry going on on my brush to a little dingleberry I don't know what's going on there I don't know what's going on anyway we will begin applying this now Yeah, I'm okay with that. Once it dries, of course, it'll look a little different. I don't want it too heavy in areas. Just look into tint the surface just bring a bit of visual interest back in right just like that that actually feels a lot more balanced once that dries it'll look different of course but yeah I like all the texture I like how that looks me likey and because that's the only thing we're working on at the moment because again I'm still undecided whether or not I want to paint that helmet some more like the horn I'm still undecided whether I want to finish that. I don't know. Let me know, guys. Do I sh should I paint that horn? But I'm gonna grab my hair dryer. Oh, it's gonna get noisy. And just a joy.
Greenleaf Terrain. I might do General Veers tonight or the two Vaders I have for MWG Josh. Cool. Okay. So, once it's dry, there you go. Very fun, eh? I'm uh, I'm I'm mostly okay with it. I think I want to get just a little bit more in behind that foot right there. So, I'm going to get a little bit more of the color. I'm going to grab some water just to knock it down a bit because it has been drying for a couple seconds here on my palette. Grab a bit of water, knock a bit off. Yeah, needs a bit more here. Grab some of that pure color there. Let's hit that area right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Oops. So I put a little bit more in there. What it gives you almost is a rusty like feeling, right? So, yeah. But see how like in some of the areas in the leading edges, it's not quite as, as intense. And that's what I was looking for. So, versus if I had applied a, a contrast paint, uh, it would not finish with that same look. It would look a little bit different. So I'm gonna let that dry, air dry normally. And I am, um, hmm. I am going to paint that horn. I'm going to, um, what did I do? Shit, what did I do for that horn? Did I use Screaming Skull? And... Ogren? It was Screaming Skull and Ogren Camel, wasn't it? Yeah, that's what it was. It was Ogren Camo. Yeah. Right? That's what we're going to say. <laughs> we're going to say it was Screaming Skull and Ogren Camo. And we're just going to redo that horn. I'm just going to cre create some brighter striations closer in towards the head. Um, and then I think I actually might apply, uh, a glaze and deepen up the horns. So we're going to take a little bit of the Ogren camo, slap it onto the palette. It's already a fantastic color as is. And I think it's pretty close to the color that I did initially lay onto the horn itself, but I'm going to start the highlighting with that itself. Just the paint, just the dampness of my brush to thin the color down a bit. Yeah. And so I'm going to put the striations right into the helmet here. Let's start right here. There's the wood chop. Yeah, yeah. Just like that. Yep. Yeah. Thin it down just a little bit more so it flows a little nicer off the brush. Since I'm drawing with this color essentially. frame here yeah. 
Please, Mary, marry that up. Yeah. Just like that. And I'm going to add a little bit of screaming skull to it. Screaming skull? Yeah, screaming skull. Just take a little bit, kind of a roughly one to one, kind of mixture, sharda, slightly. Is that what I did last time? I'm not getting that same vibe, but I don't know. I could be wrong. All right. So I'm going to build this in just a little bit towards the helmet. Like so. Brings a little bit of that texture forward. Yeah, it's a little better. And then I think what we'll do is come in with some pure Screaming Skull. Where is it? There it is. And just lightly hit those points. Dampness of the brush just to thin the color out slightly. And just go for just the high points here. I'll do it away from the main hole. Yeah, we'll do it that far. Yeah, there we go. Close it off here. Yeah, just like that, right there. Okay, that looks better. <sighs> and not oh, frame here. There we go. Oh. Sounds like everybody fighting upstairs. There we go. Yes, much happier with that. Yeah, the horn looks a lot better now. It brought some more intensity of color there now i do want to bring a little bit more green back into that now it does go from green to purple i'm not sure what i was thinking at the time but it's kind of fun i'm still running with it um Hmm. Maybe if we thinned out one of the camel greens, like military green. What if we thin one of them? Or that's it, plague bear. Plague bear. Now plague bear has got a fairly good amount of sediment built up on the bottom. You can see there, it's a bit brighter at the bottom. So we're gonna have to shake this up pretty good. Oh, I'm out of coffee. What time we at here? Ten minutes left of the broadcast. We're gonna use Plague Bear and I'm gonna hit the entirety of the horn in Plague Bear. It should just bring a bit of yellowing and greening to the uh, base and then just build out. 
and it should sit on top of that purple just fine. If I really want to build that purple back out, I can probably just, you know, thin a glaze out and just, you know, hit it with a bit of purple again. Take some shyish purple. I don't even know if I used contrast colors initially when I painted this model. I don't think so because I'm pretty sure I painted this model like years ago. So, yeah. Yeah, so we're going to use some Plague Bearer. Plague Bearer Flesh Contrast. This is the color. This is the color I want to use. I know it. In my bones. My bones. Uh, yeah, just use this brush here. So I'm going to do it on the, on the big horns coming out of his shoulder first. Uh, make sure that this is what I want to do. Because <laughs> there's always a possibility I'll hate it. <laughs> I'm always open to that possibility. But all I'm looking to do is just tint that surface. So here we go. Uh, make sure I'm in frame here. Yeah, there we go. And bang. That's it. Bang. One time. Bang. Bang. And a bang. Yeah, that's a lot better. You probably can see on the camera that it looks a lot more of a vibrant green again. But we have all those little details. It gets brighter towards the base. And in person, it's not as striking as it looks on camera. But it is noticeable. So I am happy with that. That is that is the direction we're going to go. You can see on camera again, you can see how it looks very uh, pale towards the base. right? You, you don't really see any more of that green anymore, right? So when we hit it, we just go one time, bang. One time, bang. One time. Okay, that's two times. <laughs> and one time over here. Bang. Yeah. There we go. I'm just draw some of the excess off of my finger. Yeah. That definitely is a lot better. I like that. So we're going to do it for the horn on his head as well. Uh, yeah, just use some of the straight color. And we'll just go bang, 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 and bang. I'm actually not going all the way to the base with this color as I start the brush stroke. So a little bit more of that intensity does remain, but otherwise, yeah. But that's it right there. Yeah, that's fun. That's fun. I like it. Brings a bit more of that vibrant quality back to the model. I almost want to thin it down and apply it all over the flesh, almost. But I am liking the tones I got going on for the flesh, so yeah. So now we said we were gonna put some snow on this base. So let's do that. And you know what, I'm gonna do the rim right now. Where's Abaddon Black? Let's grab some Abaddon Black. <laughs> And you know what, I'm gonna thin or knock down, see how the blue tack kind of comes up, kind of interferes. So I'm just gonna take my trusty rusty X-Acto blade and I'm gonna push that tack down out of the way. Just so I can get at this stuff here. Yeah, just like that. Just pull it out of the way. Well, you guys can't really see that that well. It's kind of bright, but anyway. Yeah, just move it out of the way. Yeah, because you can kind of see the model's not sitting flush to the surface. It's a little raised. Anyway. All right. Abaddon Black. Do, 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 so this is just the rim. Slip it there. And very carefully, we're going to just paint the rim. Very carefully. 
trying not to mess it up. Just like that. Go. Last edge. that a moment to dry uh, any questions no nobody talking everybody's quiet there what was I gonna do oh the Holland earth or the Holland earth the Holland blizzard where's the little spatula there we go now we're not gonna use too much of this and uh, I don't know do we have to shake it <laughs> I thought I had another one open no? Yes, no? I guess I only had the one. I guess I only had the one. Okay. Oh no, I have the smaller one over there. Yeah, okay. Either way, we're going to use Valhallen Blizzard. This is fun. I grabbed a little GW spatula, the texture tool. So we're just going to grab, we're not going to grab a whole lot and we're going to be pretty, um, pretty sparing. Cause we just want like just a little, um, not quite a dusting, but just a little bit on the surfaces on the high points. Cause again, I don't want to destroy that, that nice, um, effect we got going on there, but I do want to neutralize, especially on like big flat surfaces like that, uh, in the middle of that big stone. I don't really care for that. And I think the white will definitely help because there's some really strong highlights on the model itself on the flesh i brought some like really bright high points it's kind of hard to see on camera but yeah it goes pretty bright and so i'm hoping that the white down below kind of helps even everything out right that's that's evening out <laughs> so let's grab some of this um, i'm gonna move a little bit to my palette here so I'm just grabbing like that much. That's not a lot. Like I said, we're not using a whole lot with the brush. And I'm just using the, I'm using the very narrow end of the brush or the, yeah, the spatula as it were. And yeah. And so all I'm gonna do, that, that even seems like a lot. Knock some of that out. Like I said, I don't really want that much. I'm just going to touch the surface here. I'm going to move some of this excess around. Again, I'm not looking for a whole lot. Yeah, something like that right there. So I'll hit this high point. I'll hit that high point. Very, very subtle I'm looking for right there. Just like that. Just on those high points. Go start my looks. Gotta go, Chris. Dinner's ready. I'll ready to eat later. So let's grab a little bit more. And then let's move it over back here. Let's get some of this middle here. We'll throw a little bit there. 
mix it around. Get some of this stone. Yeah. It's not a lot. I'm not looking for a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like you're dry brushing with it. Looking to just catch just the high points of stuff. Just like that. Just very, very subtle. In fact, even in that corner feels like a little too much. So you just peel it off. Move it around. Yeah, there we go. Just like that. Let's grab a little bit more. A little more than that. Come on. Get on my brush. And let's go right here. It's a little too much. It's okay. There we go. Yeah. See? There we go. And all you're looking for is just to create just a kind of an even amount. So, go ahead. And like I said, it's almost like you're dry brushing with this. You're catching just the high points. Allowing those other undercolors to kind of play through. Just like that. For the most part, I'm happy with that. <clears throat> Let's see here. Just bring it a little more this way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The fun part is with this product, it does reduce down a bit. Oh, not that much. There we go. So. You can put down quite a bit and then it dry and then there and with that I think the model's done I am mostly good with this uh, I think I'll take some pictures of this do a little showcase video and that will be it what time we at here two minutes past the hour which means oh excuse me we're done I want to thank you guys for tuning in today uh, stay tuned, watch the channel. I will be posting showcase videos, I think, on this guy. I'll probably also post some um, pictures and such on the Twitters and Instagrams. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Um, finally getting this model done. It's done. Actually, because it's done, I might hang on to it for a little bit. But I think I will give it away uh, as part of the Patreon, you know, um, People who support at the higher tiers uh, get uh, drawn, and um, I haven't done it in a bit, so maybe this guy will be the next one on the block, as it were. But once I have all the medias that I want from it, I probably will give it away. So one lucky patron will probably win this in the very near future. So thank you guys for tuning in. Um, click link in the description. Patreon support, waythebrush.com, all that. I think we're done. We're done? We're done. Yeah, I'm going to wait for that to dry, and then I'm going to take some pretty pictures. <laughs> take care of your brushes. They'll take care of you now. See you guys later. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Actually, I did this in the beginning. Um... Dun 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 What song is that from? Dun 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 dun